All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling, exciting story of the sea. The mystery of Mr. Grange's map and the strange chopping sound in the hold have still not been solved. And now there's new trouble ahead, because in our last adventure, while old Dickon was spinning one of his whaling yarns to Johnny and Sue, a rough, red-headed seaman named Red Mulhooley started bullying Johnny. Captain Dalton came up just in time to prevent the seaman from striking the lad. With a mighty blow, the captain dropped him to the deck. Red, however, has vowed vengeance, and there is no doubt he will cause plenty of trouble. Now, as our story opens, it is night. Johnny, who is still bunking in the captain's cabin, has been awakened by that chopping sound. He gets up quietly and, without aqu awakening Captain Dalton, steals outside. That noise certainly sounded as though it were coming from out here somewhere. That's funny. I'm sure that scraping noise came from above. Now I can't hear it at all. I can't understand it. When you're below deck, it sounds like it's coming from above. And now from up here, it sounds as if it came from below. There, it stopped again. I wonder what it can be. Well, who's that, I wonder? Guess I shouldn't have come up here this late. I hope no one sees me on deck. Captain wouldn't like it, I know, if he knew I was here this late. I'll hide behind this cask in case it is someone. Now he won't see me, whoever it is. Say, that looks like Sue coming this way. What can she be doing up here? S Sue! Oh, oh, who's that? Sue, it's me, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, how you frightened me. I thought it was that frightful red mahooly. What are you doing here this late? I was just going to ask you the same thing. Your brother'd be awful mad, I'll bet. He knew we were up here. Oh, Ezra was sound asleep when I left the cabin and snoring like a buzzsaw. <laughs> Shh! You want someone to hear us? I forgot. I came up here because I heard that scraping sound again. The sound that your brother, I mean Mr. Grange, was talking about. Well, where was it coming from? Well, I don't know exactly. When I was in the cabin, it sounded as though it was coming from up here. But after I got up here, I heard it again. But it sounded like it was down below. I don't know what to think about it. Oh, perhaps it's nothing. The sailors were looking for it, but they couldn't find anything either. So they decided it must be some kind of a worm that eats through wood on ships. Well, this was no worm, I'll bet. It was too even-like. Just like someone was trying to dig through something. Well, what do you think it could be, Johnny? I sure wish I knew. Whatever it is, I'll bet that Altesti has something to do with it. Altesti? Yes, that mean Spaniard who tied me and shoved me down that whale oil cask. But I heard Captain Dalton say that Altesti must have gotten away in a boat. Why, they've searched from stem to stern and can find no trace of him anywhere. Well, I'm not so sure. Still, you'd think if he was on board, the sailors would be able to find him. Well, if I ever find him, I'd teach that bad man that he couldn't treat you like he did ashore the other day. And then stuffing you in that cast. Why, it's a wonder you weren't hurt. Oh, well, that was nothing. He was just mad because I wouldn't tell him where the captain's cabin was and your brother's cabin. You were sure brave not to tell. Oh, I wasn't brave. I just didn't know where the cabins were. Well, just the same. If I ever lay my hands on that, that, what is it Dickon calls him? That swab. I'll show him he can't treat a friend of mine like he did you. Gee, Sue, you're wonderful. And thanks for getting Mr. Grange to let me stay on the ship. I'll never forget it. I like you better than any boy I ever knew. Well, I mean any boy or girl. Except that I never knew any girls before. Gee, all the girls I ever saw where I lived, well, they were all such fraidy cats, but gosh, you're as brave as Captain Dalton. I like you too, Johnny. We should have lots of fun together. I'll bet we could get old Dickon to tell us a lot of yarns about whales and such, like the story he told us yesterday. He always tells me yarns when he's ashore. Once he told me how he lost his leg in a fight with a whale. Gee, I'll bet that was exciting. Oh, it was. And he said that one of these days, he was going to meet that same old whale. And when he does... Hey, do you think well, he ever will? Let's see. We forgot what we came on deck for. I think we ought to... Wait a minute. Who's that coming this way? Quick, hide behind this oil can. Yes, hurry. Shh. If he sees us, he'll take us to Captain Dalton for being up this time of night. Then he's likely to be mad about it. Who is he? Can you see? Yes. It's Red Mulhooley. It's that sailor who tried to bully me and Captain Dalton knocked him down. And here comes another one down the deck. They must be on watch. Listen. Maybe we can hear what they're talking about. Heave to, matey. I have someone I'd like to talk to you about. Aye, but I must get to my watch in a hurry. Never mind the watch. 
This is much important. That may be, but you're none too strong with Captain Dalton as it is. Who cares about Captain Dalton? Uh, he's a mighty man, and wouldn't a fear if he's crossed. He hove down your hook without much difficulty today, and he'll do it again, you may lay to that. Hold your tongue, sailor. Besides, uh, he hit me when I wasn't looking. You wasn't looking, eh? How come he hit you in the middle of the chin, spang him at chips? Did you have your eyes shut? Now, listen, this is no time for a squall between us. Now, listen to me, sailor. I'm going to get even with the skipper, even if it's my last voyage, and you're going to help me. Not me. You can boil me in blubber if I have any part of your dirty work. You won't, eh? Well, suppose I told the captain that your name wasn't Jameson, eh? Mm. Suppose I told him you escaped from the New Bedford brig and that they're looking for you. Yeah, maybe it is true. Maybe it is, but... I never killed a man like you. Hey, how did you know that? Never mind how I know, but one false move and I'll open my hatch and your rigger will be in for a greasy voyage. Why, you... Go my... on, there'll be no more bullying me. You'd better steer a clear course or you'll be in irons. Else I don't know Captain Dalton. The bell scum. How did he know I killed a man? Well, whatever. That wasn't the first. It won't be the last. Nobody can knock me down and get away with it. I'm going to get even if I have to pin him under a stanchion. I'll do it right now. Gosh, Sue, what are we going to do? That man is going to try to kill the captain. Well, Johnny, there's only one thing we can do. We've got to get to the captain's cabin. We sure do. Shh, quiet now. And hurry before we're too late. Hurry, John. Who's that? Suzanne. Sue. Where is that girl? I'd swear I heard that scraping sound again. Now it's stopped. Found that chair. Now, where's that lamp? If I, if I could only... Ah, there it is again. I'm going to get at the bottom of this thing right now. That, that lamp, where is it? Oh, well, perhaps I can grope my way to Captain Dalton's. These cabins are as black as pitch. Captain Dalton! Who's there? It's I, Ezra Grange. Oh, come in. The door's open. Captain Dalton, something must be done at once. A vast man, what's the commotion? Captain Dalton, I'm not a coward, but that chopping sound is beginning to get on my nerves. What? That same sound again? Yes, I could hear it right below my cabin. Perhaps your nerves are jumpy, sir. Your imagination is getting the best of you, it's sir. It's not my imagination. I heard it distinctly. But we've traced every foot of this ship. There's not a sign of anything out of the ordinary aboard the bar, Paul Parrot. Yeah, but listen to me. There is something that is causing that odd chopping noise, and I intend to find out once and for all just what it is. Aye, sir, but what, uh, do you... Besides, Sue is not in the cabin. What? She's disappeared. Well, that does call for looking into. Wait, I light the lamp. There. And look, Johnny the boy. His bunk is empty also. Where is he? Down my hatch. The lad's gone, too. Somebody's taken the boy and my sister while we were asleep. Now, perhaps not. We'll soon see. If anything happens to Suzanne, I'll... easy. If anything has happened, we've got to keep our wits about us. Yes, I suppose you're right, Captain. But hurry, something must be done. Aye, sir, that there does. And there will be something done, else my name isn't Roy Dalton. I wouldn't have anything happen to my sister for all the treasures in the world. Treasures? Did you say, sir? Hurry, Captain Dalton, there may be no time to lose. Right you are, sir. Little Miss Sue and the lad Johnny may be both in danger this very moment. But hold, I'll blow out this lamp so no one can see us leave the cabin. Some swab may be laying for us, and I'll walk into no trap. You can lay to that. Come along. But take it easy, sir, and we'll... Wait. Shh. Someone's coming down the hatchway. The hatch is open, and I can see a shadow against the moonlight. Quickly, hide behind this door. Can you make out who it is? I think so. It looks like the red-headed swab who was bullying the lad today. Red Mulholy? Aye, so he is. And if he's up to some deviltry, he'll be put in chains. Look, he's heading for your cabin. Aye, then he is up to mischief, the bill scum. Look, Dalton, someone's following him. I can see his shadow up by the hatch there. Either that, or someone is helping the swab to do his deviltry. Good Lord, it, it, it's Sue and the boy. What in the world are they doing? They're trailing the bloomin' redhead, or I'm a weak need lover. Well, evidently, Red doesn't see them, for he's heading right into your cabin. We've got to get in and grab him before those young'uns get down here, else one of them might get hurt. Come on. Quiet now. When I say the word, we'll rush them using a swab. Ah! Ah! Man, the boat's men, there's a bow at the starboard. Ah! Drat that bird. I shouldn't have let Dickon leave him in my cabin. That will put the red-headed one on his guard. Ah! Captain, 
have a knife. Russian Captain Dalton, now's the time. Take it easy now. He has a knife. And in the dark, someone is likely to be hurt. Let me handle the swab. Red? Red? We know you're in that cabin. Drop that knife. Who's going to make me? Not holy. You're a bad one. And I'm giving you fair warning. Drop that knife. Because I'm coming in there after you. And it'll give me a great pleasure to rip you from stem to stern. All right. You asked for it. Stay here, Grange. I'm going to take the blasted worm. Come on. Out. 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 So, Red Mulhooly did try to make good his threat. Will Captain Dalton and Grange overpower him? And will Sue and Johnny escape unharmed? And the chopping sound from the hold, or from wherever it's coming, still remains a mystery. These and many other exciting events are soon to be unfolded in the further adventures aboard the Paul Parrot. Be sure not to miss even one of these thrilling adventures on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward.